Okay. Um, <coughs> um, this talk will be about it's something like a follow-up of about uh, Andrew Haley's talk uh, about bug hunting. In this case, more from the user perspective, not uh, how to debug uh, those bugs. It's how to detect them when they happen in the JVM. So, for example, you are running your program and suddenly uh, you get a, get a segmentation fault. And you try it several times, and the second time it does not work. So the problem is it's, it's very, very hard to reproduce. So your test cases won't really uh, catch them. Yeah, and uh, you might know the Apache Lucene project. Um, I'm, the, uh, I'm part of the project management committee, and I'm an Apache Software Foundation member. And um, I'm mostly working on Apache Lucene, which is a full-text search engine. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. And um, yeah, I'm working as a consultant mostly in this world, so providing support for uh, full text search engines based on Apache Lucene, Solar, and Elasticsearch. So the first is, uh, what's Lucene about? This, uh, this step room is uh, about Java, so maybe not everybody knows Lucene. So Apache Lucene Core is uh, a high performance, full feature text search engine, uh, which is completely written in Java from the beginning. So it started in about 1998, I think. Um, and at that time, um, it, it was really innovative to do something like a full text search engine completely in Java. Um, it, now it's, it's very mature and it's used in a lot of products. And basically how it works, just to, to show it in a very quick way. A full text search engine uses an inverted index, which is nothing more than that what you see here. Uh, on, on the screen, it's basically what you have in a book at the end, it's uh, the index you have. And it's called inverted index because you can look up a term in that index and so something like that, cherries, and then you get the page numbers uh, where this term occurs in. So basically this is not very complicated. Um, only in a book you only have a few terms in a full text index, like you know Google has the biggest one somehow. But also in your shopping system, you have something like uh, index, which consists of uh, millions uh, or even billions of terms. And you also have many, many documents. So the page numbers are simply the documents where the term exists. So these are, um, this are posted, uh, called the posting lists in full text search engine. Yeah. So um, Apache Lucene is um, a library which uh, lies behind um, the, I think m more people know this two uh, products. Uh, one is Elasticsearch and the other one is Apache Sola. Both use um, Lucene behind the scenes. And users, I just choose some from uh, that everybody knows. So Wikipedia, for example, is using Elasticsearch for the full text search. Um, GitHub, everybody uses it, I think, uses uh, Elasticsearch for the code search when you are entering something there. Uh, there's also the iTunes shop using Apache Sola, um, Instagram. Another user which uses directly uses Lucene is Twitter. Uh, they have a fork of Lucene which is uh, very special. Uh, changed a little bit uh, to work better with their uh, real-time infrastructure. And of course, every JDK developer also knows Jira. They use Lucene internally, although the implementation inside is not really the best one. I, <laughs> if you are searching for an issue, it's in most cases a bit hard with full text box. Yeah, so what makes uh, Lucene interesting for testing uh, for JDM bugs? So um, I think the first thing you might think of, okay, maybe the algorithms. Yeah, that's uh, partly true, because Lucene is, as I said, you have huge indexes with billions of terms. Um, those are partly gigabytes uh, from size. You have a lot of very performance critical tight loops. So this is optimal for the hotspot um, optimizer. 
uh, to start doing optimizations because much of those loops are, uh, are executed millions of times for each search query. So it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's very, very low level Java code. So it's not something like an EJB application where you're just coding some interfaces. Here is your processing data all the time. The second thing is, um, Lucene, you might think, yeah, we are here in a university building, so think of your studies at the university. Lucene, so this term index you have seen before, mostly is based on structures like uh, finite state automatons, finite state transducers. So you might know that from regular expressions how they are internally implemented. So when you're looking at a, up a term, you are going through the state machine and you have a query where you want to match the terms. So there's a lot of, um, and, and those FSTs, uh, like the term index, are very, very huge. So uh, to have this term index inside, uh, to look up the terms and find the postings based on that. So uh, we are also handling a lot of data and together with all those loops, there's a lot for Hotspot to optimize and it does it really, really good. Um, the other thing is uh, there are also some uh, code patterns which are repeated very often. So everything is based on iterators in Lucene. So we, we don't use Java iterators here, it's just uh, the pattern of iterators. So for example, when you execute a query, you are collecting uh, the documents that are hits and then you have several queries that you want to combine together. Uh, so every query returns the documents uh, it has seen as in something like an iterator on ints, and you have. Uh, and if you have, has, uh, if you have, if you then run uh, a second query and want to intersect the results, so for example to end, so find all documents where term A and term B is inside, you have to uh, somehow leapfrog is something, is maybe a good explanation of the algorithm. So you, this iterator also has the possibility to not only jump to the next item, it can also jump to the next item after a specific document ID I have seen, so they can somehow um, work together. And th those algorithms are, as you see here, also very low level. And the, uh, another thing which is done here is, for example, applying filters when users are clicking on facets and all that stuff. There are a lot of bit set operations inside, like AND, OR, or for the iterators, we need stuff like next set bit. And we have a lot of own implementations, so we don't use Java util bit set uh, because it's uh, not fixed size and um, has some performance problems. So basically, we also have something like sparse bit sets where you have gaps inside the bit set that you can, can save memory. And of course, there's a lot of uh, stuff for, to optimize for hotspot. Yeah, um, one thing you have to mention, I have to mention is we have rare use of string only in user facing APIs. So everything internally works on byte arrays, which contains somehow the terms are UTF-8 bytes, bytes, but all those stuff like the FSTs are working only on more or less huge byte arrays and slices on top of that. And the last thing Lucene is using is memory mapping. So the whole index um, is on 64-bit machines completely memory mapped using map byte buffer. And uh, this makes it really fast. So whenever it's possible to use that, uh, we are using that on the searching side uh, to read all that information uh, from disk, have random access while sorting and all that stuff. So, but all this stuff you see here um, does not really make it very special uh, if you want to run tests. The problem is when you run your unit tests, uh, you, you only have a very limited view and hotspot cannot really start to optimize uh, because when the unit test is only executed once, uh, it's, it's very unlikely that the hotspot optimizer starts uh, to do something. So um, you need something in addition. One thing is you need to run your tests on huge amounts of data. That's what Lucene is also doing. And the second thing is um, if you just want to test that your code is correct, it's perfectly fine to write classical unit tests. But the problem is 
if if you have so many combinations of uh, algorithms you can glue together, and you also have the hotspot optimizer kicking in, um, you need something else in uh, in your uh, in your in your test framework, and that's what Lucene started in 2011. And uh, this is called uh, randomize your tests, and it will blow up your uh, blow your socks off. This was a talk by David Rice, who invented that framework. Um, <coughs> the idea here is uh, to not have, just have static unit tests, but you are modifying the input data. Of course, you do not completely uh, randomize the input data. Uh, you, you 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 have some some special constraints on that. You also try to uh, exchange some software components. For example, you see we have something like different directory implementations, how to do the disk access. So you run the test suite simply uh, each time with another implementation of the disk I.O. access and all that stuff, or uh, all that stuff. Then there's also another thing like the environment, local, time zone. You can exchange that. Another thing which is uh, only in italic here is exchanging the JVM and the operating system, but also the options of the JVM. And another thing is inserting through mocks something like LO problems or network problems into your tests. The problem is randomization is not bad. Uh, it's not really good for tests. So, um, so for that, we have something like a, a framework which allows us to make it predictable what happens there. So we have a, an extension to JUnit. It's almost compatible to JUnit. And it also supports everything. You can run it from inside Eclipse. Um, but it has some additional features, uh, like it allows to do randomization. Um, <coughs> it, um, it also allows, um, uh, allows to isolate the tests, uh, reset them. You, uh, we, we also have the possibility to, to change uh, the, uh, the the random properties. I come back to that now. And the question is, how do you want to reproduce a test failure when you make everything random in your tests? And because of that, uh, the test framework for every test execution, the test gets an initial random seed, which is calculated by the test framework and is available through utility methods. And then the test can do something like um, randomizing its input data and uh, do some stuff on it. Uh, when a test fails, this random seed is printed um, during the test execution, and it's also included in the stack traces. So for example, uh, we have a test here running in, in the Eclipse, and this test fails. You see here, uh, you get the assertion error, but you also see we have some random seed inside, which um, allows us to execute the test runner with exactly the random seed, and it would reproduce exactly the same test environment based on that. And uh, sometimes, of course, um, uh, you freeze the JVM with that. Could happen, then you can also ask JSTAG uh, to get uh, the test seed to reproduce the same stuff. Uh, the problem is how to do assertions in your randomized test code. OK, you can do something like compare against the reference. So if you have a different algorithm doing the same, you can just compare the results. You randomize your input data. You have something where you know that it really works. And you have something where you are not 100% sure, so you are just comparing the results. You can also do uh, something like uh, checking for boundary conditions. Um, and all this stuff. And finally, you can also do nothing and just run your tests and wait until your JVM crashes. And that's what <laughs> we are doing um, in, in the testing of uh, OpenJDK early access builds at the moment. So uh, the idea how to do that. So we have learned about a lot of randomization here. What's missing now? So the idea is what we are now need is something like uh, JVM randomization, so our, all our test suites are running with different JVMs, different versions. We are also running with IBM J9, for example, or preview releases of uh, JDK 9 at the moment. And a second thing that we are somehow randomizing, okay, we are cycling through it, 
um, is we are always for every test run which are running 24 7 so it's not something like the test suite only once when somebody commits code no the test suite is running all the time so the machine is running the tests from uh, exactly so it never stops it runs it in separate uh, several processes in parallel so uh, for every test run we are changing the garbage collector we are changing a different uh, JVM like 32 or 40, uh, 64 bits uh, we are for 32 bits we are also changing server and client VM sometimes we enable uh, compressed ordinary object pointers so we are randomizing um, everything and running the tests until we find some issue and the last thing we are randomizing is of course Linux, uh, Windows, Mac OS and Solaris Linux, macOS, and Solaris is not so interesting. What's interesting, for example, for a lot of users is to just also sometimes run your tests on Windows because um, with the file system, it often blows up because you cannot delete files which are currently open and all that stuff. So um, you often see test failures on Windows which you are not really seeing at the <coughs> beginning. Yeah. So basically, here is um, one of our servers, which is uh, doing uh, the, the test runs all the time. So we have several shops for, um, for, uh, for different versions of cuisine and different um, uh, operating systems. So for example, here you see one for the trunk of Linux. So you, on every run, you see here which parameters were used. Maybe it's a little bit too small, but for example, this one was uh, JDK 32 bits. Uh, JDK 9 uh, early access build 102, which is uh, the, the actual one, I think, or is a new one already? No. Yeah. And um, so you, you can see that. And when, when, the, ex when the tests are executed, it, uh, it runs something like a Ruby script with picture right settings like Java Home um, and everything else. And after that, it starts uh, the whole build process and runs all the tests. At the beginning, it prints out everything again. And if you're watching the whole thing, and uh, you, you might see sudden failure. The failure can, of course, be caused in your own project which we have seen in the last week quite often because uh, we tested some new component and whenever it was used, some tests were failing strangely. And uh, yeah, so you, you're finding a lot of bugs by doing those randomizations, but um, sometimes like uh, today in the morning, you see something like that, uh, segmentation for it. So actually uh, on Wednesday I updated uh, to from 95, I think, build 95 of JDK 9 to 102, and today in the morning we saw the first issue with 32 bit um, uh, G1 GC and something like that. So that's just actual. Yeah. Finally, uh, I wanted to show some bugs we found. That so initially the whole thing started uh, at the Java 7 TA release. Um, we won't, don't want to talk about that, it's, it's very old already. And uh, the second thing, when something happened, uh, we did not do early access tests at that time, or not really early access tests, was Java 7 update 40. And at that time, uh, there was a very, very strange bug, which did only hit some users and uh, finally found out uh, that it was because in update 40 there was uh, some improvements for the super words, which is, called, which is using the CPU. AVX optimizations, these are used, I told you, they are using a lot of bit sets, and those bit sets are ended together or together, and the vector extensions make this more fast, so by, by doing stuff like ending four words together and all this stuff. The problem was this only happened on Haswell CPUs, and uh, it was not easy to figure out. And at that time, uh, Rory O'Donnell came to us and asked if we could um, could uh, start to do the early access testing. So it was finally fixed in 7 update 55. So for example, we also had some, some other smaller bugs found, like by the local randomization, we found out that runtime exit does not work in the Turkish local because of a stupid bug because it was, not, uh, it was using uh, string to uppercase or string to lowercase with a default locale and 
in the Turkish, the small e and the, uh, and the large uh, and, and the capital E are not both having, uh, so do, one has a dot, the other one has no dot in, in English, but in Turkey, both have a dot or have no dot, and that's a problem. And because of that, something in the class initializer of the process builder did not work. So this was fixed in Yara 8. There's also another bug which is not fixed until today. This would be something for Andrew uh, to look into it. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's still not fixed, so we have uh, in the museum class an assert with trips since seven update twenty five, but very really it's it's not it's mostly impossible to reproduce. So uh, cause is still unknown. And finally for the Java nine part, um, during this testing like the bug you have seen today, we found a lot of those array copy bugs which were due to the improvements um, around that. Uh, I think it was Roland doing all that stuff. Uh, they were almost easy to reproduce, but they were only found by uh, those uh, random testing. Um, there was also something, something else, a string to lowercase did not work with uh, some concatenated strings. This was another hotspot issue. And uh, there's another one ongoing, which is since uh, build 93. So for example, you have seen we are not using the compact strings at the moment because they fail horribly with Lucene at the moment. Um, this one is easy to reproduce, but fixed recently. I think there was also something like, uh, like a memory barrier or something fail, uh, uh, missing. So string get chars failed in that case. And uh, this was something else we found out uh, that build 54 broke the compiling resource and target uh, 1.7 and together with the diamond operator and this was a bug in the type system at that time. Or I'm not sure, it, it was not really a bug in the type system. The problem was that, that the type system was updated and uh, it was not taking care of the old source and target versions. And also Lucene is also fixing something with, um, uh, with working together with the JDK. So we are always updating our code. So the next version will be, will of course, currently we are already uh, with Lucene, we are compatible to Jigsaw as it stands at the moment. We are not yet running the tests all the time. So just in our development environments, and we removed, for example, a lot of stuff, accessible objects that accessible is removed everywhere from the code. We only have one instance back, and that's another recent discussion where we are working together in, um, about the SunMist cleaner removal in J, uh, JDK9. The problem is, as I said, we are using those memory map files. And we have a little bit of problems with long running processes. Um, so we need to do those unmappings and this would have uh, failed with Java 9. So we have a workaround for that at the moment. So we are uh, also working together. So, but we are prepared for Jigsaw and I think you should really start to try uh, to work with Jigsaw. Yeah, and that was it. Thank you. I also wanted to thank to the, um, to the people mentioned here. Vladimir, he's always fixing all hotspot bugs. Uh, the same for Roland. And uh, the other ones, uh, Rory O'Donnell is sitting here. And yeah, thank you.